what is up everybody welcome back to the gifted young one channel today we're going to be talking about a very controversial song uh i actually was in my car this morning and i saw that npr was actually having someone on as a guest to um actually speak about the song auntie diaries by kendrick lamar uh, it's off of his new album that just recently dropped. I've been listening to it, but honestly, like I swear I listened to the whole album and I didn't even hear this the first time it came around. Usually when I listen to music, especially from like new albums or newer music, I'm always scoping it for anything that's potentially problematic because honestly like hip hop, rap, and just music in general normalizes saying like shitty things about people that are marginalized, including people in the LGBTQ plus community. So, Today, I'm gonna be reviewing the song lyric by lyric. I'm not gonna go like specifically line by line, but I'm gonna go kind of almost, you know, stanza by stanza because, you know, it's a poem, it's a piece of art. Like, I'm gonna be honest, like just because art exists doesn't take away from like the actual lived realities of the people that these people are talking about. So I just wanna preface it with that. I also wanna preface it with that. This is my opinion, this is how I feel. And this is the perspective from a trans male perspective. Um, he's talking about a trans man in this song. He's talking about trans women in this song, you know, potentially because uh, the, on the second part of the song, he he doesn't refer to his his actual aunt as you know the correct pronouns. So I'm not sure the story behind that, but at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's a story. This is like an actual experience. Now, there's some things in this that I'm like, you know, could have been left out or could have been changed, but I guess it wouldn't have been as impactful as it is. Um, if it didn't have these words in it. So let's get into it. My name is Gifted Young One. We're about to get into this music review. Let's get into the video. Be sure to check out the links in the description, but we're about to get into this and have an educated conversation about it. And I also wanna break down and create some sort of balance and like kind of see both sides because for me, I, I actually have a, a lived experience, you know what I'm saying, of being trans, of of being in a situation similar to what he's talking about. And you know, some it, in a way it's important that we hear not only like the side where it's like me speaking about it, but the, the side of the people who are experiencing the changes with you know the trans people and the trans family members so yeah let's get into it so first off he starts the song heart plays in ways the mind can't figure out and it repeats like three times and then it also this is how we conceptualize human being for me i'm not just taking this as a song because i believe that kendrick lamar composes music and doesn't just hop in the booth and just you know writes and speaks so like i'm saying in the beginning it's saying this is how we conceptualize human beings this is how we conceptualize human beings the way that people speak about trans and queer people is similar to the way that he's speaking in the song in in the way he's saying it in the song like as far as tone like once he gets into like the the bulk of it is literally like you know certain without without worry of being wrong but when you come down to the actual meaning of it all and then hearing what he says and what he means what he means not what he says but what he means it has a deeper perspective to it my auntie is a man now i think i'm old enough to understand now drinking parmesan with her hat turned backwards motorola pager off-white guest jacket blue air maxes gold chains and curl kits 93 nissan wax job the earliest big social big personality vocal play the underground verbatim and stayed local my auntie is a man now i watched him and his girl holding hands now he's just describing his uncle who i'm saying uncle because i'm not gonna i'm not gonna disrespect the person because i mean i just respect pronouns he's speaking about his uncle in the song about how he remembers his uncle before transition and pretty much like how cool his uncle was to him like i think it's really cool that it's this perspective and i think people get caught up in like the little words and don't like zoom out and really get that big perspective of okay look he's 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 talking about how influential his uncle was to him and about how how much you know of an impact that he had on him tips of the avenues under under street lights made his thinking i want me a bad bitch when i get big they hug on the corner like california king cold hand all up her skirt cars whistling down the road see my auntie is a man now Slight bravado, scratching the likes from Lotto, hoping that she pull up tomorrow so I can hang out in the front seat 
six by nines keeping the music up under me my auntie is a man now and like i really break this down like i mean i'm gonna be honest with y'all if y'all are not really breaking this down like a poem you're not gonna understand it i did this in high school that was something that we had to do probably even in middle school it's just breaking poems down and, and trying to understand them he's just re recollecting in his mind like how he remembers his uh uncle and how he remembers you know just how cool his uncle was you listen to the type of person that his uncle was and it's just like okay this is someone that a lot of y'all look up to a lot of y'all are inspired by in that realm as far as aesthetics and culture that person would get your respect i asked my mama why, why my uncles don't like him that much and at the parties why they always want to fight him that much she said ain't no telling niggas always been jealous because he had more women more money and more attention made more envy calling him anything but broke was less offending my auntie is a man now so get Getting into this, like I said, when it comes to aesthetics and culture and even money, you will respect this person. And a lot of the, the basis of this lack of respect and this blatant disrespect is because of who people who people are. And when it comes to like, if, if they identify with something that is not the quote unquote norm, then they're automatically seen as less. But when it comes to every other aspect of this person's life, a lot of black people value aesthetics, culture, and money more than, you know, the actual uniqueness of an individual. And they would rather, you know, they would rather beat down on an individual for for one single thing that they don't have in common with you. But everything else about them is cool. You, they, they fit every other perspective, they fit every other trope that you feel comfortable with being around. I think I'm old enough to understand now, drinking Parmesan with her hat turned backwards, back when it was comedic relief to say <laughs> We ain't no better, elementary kids, with no filter. However, my auntie became a man and I took pride in it. She wasn't gay, she ate and that was the difference. That's what I told my friends in second grade. Now, I'm gonna start off with this. I don't think it's cool for him to say the F slur. I'm very partic particular about language these days, so I'm really intentional with the words that I say. Like, I don't say certain things because I just think it has a negative connotation, so I won't use it. But, you know, I could if I wanted to because I'm under the rainbow umbrella. But when it comes to Kendrick Lamar, he's not. And that's the thing, I don't know anything about this man's sexuality, but as far as I know, he's not an op he's not an out, you know, queer individual. So I don't think it's cool that he said the F slur. But with the context of it, when I think about context and when I think about about this being an art piece sometimes you know you have to take creative freedom and do certain things with the risk of hoping that it'll be a bigger lesson you know rather than a bigger mistake and i thought it was interesting like that's what i was saying earlier about how, how gender and sexuality are different things but this song seems like it's from a perspective of someone who who has family that is in the queer community but doesn't necessarily do the research doesn't necessarily find the language doesn't necessarily figure out that a hey, sexuality and gender are different things you know the way that his second grade self was explaining who his uncle is to someone else is that you know is that he likes women it's definitely it, it like makes you think and that's that is the only reason why i'm willing to like listen to the rest of the song with him still dropping f slurs in this because it's not it's not baseless, you know what I'm saying? A lot of like, for example, before I stopped listening to Tory Lanez because I don't listen to him anymore, um, and a lot of y'all do, and y'all are weird, but um, <laughs> that's just my opinion. One time when I was listening to him, I listened to one of his albums, like when it had first came out, and he was using the F slur like for no reason, no reason. There are so many other words you could use, and that, and as soon as I heard that, I didn't listen to the rest of the album because it's baseless. See, when I'm listening to this song, at the end of it, he makes sense of it. He makes sense of why he used this word, even though he he shouldn't. I ain't, I'm not saying he can't, but he shouldn't, and he did. But for him to create context around it and try to like push a narrative of people opening their minds and like learning something, I can respect it. She picking me up from school, they staring at her in the face. They couldn't comprehend what I grew accustomed. We pull off, bumping quick, like it was nothing. My auntie is a man now, what a relationship. I grew up fast, I needed no one to babysit. He gave me some cash, then gave me some game. Cherry, freshener, on the dash, I never complained. She even cut my hair at the pad, was loving my fade. The first person I seen write a rap, that's when my life had changed. It's wild, like I was saying before, like in the beginning, almost just saying like how much his uncle has influenced just his present self and it makes me understand like okay this story is important to him and he 
wanted to get it out there. And I think sometimes people like have the passion and the compassion and the care, but they don't really know how to express it. And they don't really know how to vocalize it with using the right language. So you really have to like, you know, sit down and be like, yo, this, this ain't right. You, you shouldn't have said this, this, and this but I get what you mean and this is a better way to say it. Definitely like, you know, a thing where you have to call people in instead of calling them out because sometimes intentions are clear, sometimes intentions are good, but people just don't really know how to say how they feel in a way that makes you feel comfortable. House full of demos, smoke stuck on the window, cameras on the microphone, all women and men. Know. My auntie was a man now, we cool with it. The history had trickled down and made us ignorant. Now that, that is a big, big aspect. The history had trickled down and made us ignorant. Like a lot of people don't have ignorant ide ideologies until they literally hear it from other people and hear it from family members. That's why I say like, what you say really matters. For example, like I had a, I had an instance where I was with somebody and their parent had came to me to have a conversation about how they would be messing my pronouns up and you know, wouldn't be able to get it right. And if they mess up, intentions aren't, you know, malice but at the same time like they were saying that in front of a child and the child said to me like oh i might mess up your pronouns meanwhile the child has never messed up my pronouns ever so it's just like what you say matters and kids pick up on it when you're a kid you pick stuff up easily adults pick up stuff easily too because a lot of you adults don't have your own mind y'all just copying stuff and mirroring what you see and not really questioning things but when you don't question stuff and, and it's your history a lot of people don't question their history you should be questioning everything because this life is just made up. <laughs> so you should question everything. But a lot of people don't. That's why that history trickling down literally like changed his people's mind. My favorite cousin said he's returning the favor and following my auntie with the same behavior. Demetrius is Marianne now. He's confident to live his plan now. I think it's interesting. I guess the same behavior would be transitioning, but he also goes to say he's more confident to live his plan. As I'm saying, it's not an agenda because it's one thing to see something that you resonate with and then going deeper into yourself as compared to seeing something and then copying it. It usually doesn't work like that. And a lot of people think that it does work like that, but it's a lot deeper of a process than just seeing something and wanting to replicate it. He's more confident to live his plan now, but that's all I'm saying is like, it's his plan and it's not something like y'all think that just because trans people are seen more or it's talked about more or gender is talked about more that kids are just gonna be trans just because like that's not the case anyway let's get to the next part but the family in disbelief this time convincing themselves see he's he living discreet he's fine they said they never seen it in him but i seen it the barbie dolls played off reflections of venus off reflection of venus he built a wall so tall you could climb over he didn't laugh as hard when the kids started joking we ain't no better. Middle school kids with no filter. However, I had to be very mindful of my good cousin. I knew exactly who he was, but I still loved him. Dropping the slurs again. So <laughs> I feel like that's what I'm saying. It's a piece of art. It's literally a poem. And like, I'm not going to get over the fact that he said he dropped the F slur. Like, I'm not going to be able to listen to this song ever again after doing this review. I'm going to be honest. I think I think the song is almost like a, a art installation. You know what I'm saying? Listening to it. I mean, it comes down to this shock value, but the shock value is to make you listen. And I feel like if you listen, you might actually learn something. Demetrius is Marianne now. I mean, he's really Marianne. Even took things further, changed his gender before Bruce Bruce Jenner was certain. Living his truth, if it meant, if it meant see a surgeon. We didn't talk for a while. He seemed more distant. Wasn't comfortable around me. Everything was offensive. But I recall we both had a sick sense of humor, made raw. But times change all. Demetrius is Marianne now. And then I also thought like, um, I definitely related to the perspective of, you know, we didn't talk for a while. He seemed more distant, wasn't comfortable around me. Everything was offensive. And I think that when people like, they protect themselves, I guess you could say, like, I think when people protect themselves and like have new standards as far as their language, I think it's hard for people to get used to. So it may not, it may seem like everything is offensive, but you know, maybe everything you were saying around this person before was fucked up. And maybe they didn't relate to that perspective then, but you know, now and things are new, like, like, like he said, but times change all. Someone having dark humor and then, you know, now you see them as a different person or having different humor because of their new boundaries, you know? I right, remember church, Easter Sunday, I sat in the pew. You had stronger faith, more spiritual and enthused with life straight, which I found ironic because the pastor didn't see him the same. He said my cousin was going through some things. He promised the world we living in was an act of abomination. 
and Demetrius was to blame. I knew you was conflicted by the feelings of preacher man, wondering if God still called you a decent man. Still you found the courage to be subservient, just to anoint, until he singled you out to prove his point, saying, Demetrius is a Marianne now. Church, his auntie, is a man now. It hurt you the most because your belief was close to his words, forcing me to stand now. I said, Mr. Preacher Man, should we love thy neighbor? The law of the land or the heart was greater. Mm. And that's why I like the beginning where it says heart plays in ways the mind can't figure out. And I thought that was so deep, especially with that part. Are we playing with the laws of the land or laws of the heart? It's like y'all want to believe in a religion but not not believe every part of it you want to nitpick to individualize people you want to nitpick to other people a lot of people get caught up in bias and get get caught up in matters of the heart and stuff that you you how you feel about something how you feel about something doesn't change how somebody exists i recognize the study she was taught since birth but that don't justify the feelings that my cousin perverse the building was thinking out loud bad angel that's when you looked at me and smiled said thank you and i think that it's so it might seem so little to a lot of you. It might seem so little for y'all to just defend like your family members or defend someone you know and be like, yo, like, you know, this is their pronouns. They don't go by this or, you know, defending them in general, like how he stood up and was like, you know, but what does the Bible say? Love thy neighbor. So why would you, you know, be so hateful towards someone that his cousin saying thank you it's it's big that he mentioned that because we just want to be loved and protected and it's like the world kind of comes at us at every angle and every side so by you being there for us and protecting us at times where we may not have the mental capacity to and you do and you are fine and able that is so like it, it is definitely it means a lot like being there for for people being there for your family when others in the whole world isn't it, it means a lot yeah i just wanted to add that because I, I literally like you know anybody that has gone to bat for me or just offended me when i wasn't there or when i am there like thank you i appreciate you because all i ask is for respect and and because i share love and respect with the world i just want it in return the day i chose humanity over religion the family got closer it was all forgiven I said them F-bombs, I ain't know no better. Mistakenly, I ain't think that you know any different. See, I was taught words was nothing more than a sound. <laughs> if ever they was pronounced without any intention, the very second you challenged the shit I was kicking. That lyric alone kind of solidified me actually breaking this song down and not like completely canceling it and canceling Kendrick Lamar like nah like the man has something to say and it is it, it leads true he has such a pulse on the culture like because he is the culture and he creates culture so he has a pulse on the culture and he understands that a lot of y'all think this way I was taught words was nothing but a sound nothing more than a sound bro a lot of you think that the words that you say don't mean anything but they do I literally did a podcast on this about how your words are so powerful but you know we were literally taught like words is just a sound that's why when people say i you know i'm not cool with you saying this to me everybody wants to go oh you're offended you're 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 triggered you're 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 sensitive no we have boundaries words mean things like words have history and connotation and context and and you have to really put intention behind the things that you say because whether you do or not it's going to have a meaning and you have to you really have to control your narrative a lot of people don't care a lot of people don't mind being offensive a lot of people don't want to filter or think about other people when they speak um and that's the issue with the world we're so individualistic it's like we need to get on a level of like operating as a community because unity is the only way to to just solve any problem and i think a lot of us you know are divided by language but it's primarily because people don't even understand the power of their words the things you say matter you know it's not just a word it's, if it was just a word somebody wouldn't be feeling a way about it you gaslighting people's feelings and making it seem like a word doesn't mean anything it does because it just made somebody feel like shit. it just made somebody not want to be here like think about that your words have power you use them wisely and i think that is such a big message in this song because even though he dropped the f-bomb there was a roll up and a clean up in a in a in a breakdown of why it was said reminding me about a show i did out the city that time i bring a fan on stage to rap but disapproved a word she couldn't say with me you said kendrick ain't no room for contradiction to truly understand love switch positions we can say it together 
but only if you let a white girl say nigga. Let me read that again. To truly understand love, we must switch positions. We can say it together, but only if you let a white girl say nigga. That's the end of the song. That final, that final part of it kind of made me cringe a little less at him saying it in the song. Because I think like throughout the whole song, it's like if you listen to the background, there's literally like a buildup throughout the whole song. And at the end, you hear like this, all these instruments being picked up and like at the end of the song you really hear like we're at the we're at the climax we've reached the end of a journey we literally have gotten to the end of a journey but what did you learn if you listen to the song comment down below let me know what you think uh, if you have opinions on what i said and you kind of have a different perspective share it because i think that that's the biggest part is is speaking about these things rather than demonizing and canceling them because i think that having these conversations can lead to more unity honestly and i think it's so necessary for us to speak on these things so finally i'm gonna wrap it up by by just talking about that last line about you know we can understand if we just change our perspectives if we if we switch our perspective we can all love each other if we all just put put ourselves in each other's shoes and also a lot of people who are pro-black which you know people have been preaching it for a while but i'm always gonna bring it up but people say they're pro-black but are transphobic people say they're pro-black but are homophobic but there are queer and trans black people so when someone in your community your community says this word bothers me why don't you listen because when white people are saying the n-word i know some of y'all defend some of y'all will defend white people to the end and let them say the n-word i won't <laughs> i'm not talking to y'all because y'all don't care about your people. I mean the people who actually feel a way that about white people saying the N-word and understand that historically it's just not okay for them to use the word. People that you got, you people. When someone says that they don't like a word, why don't you listen and kind of understand why? Because historically, culturally, queer people and trans people have gotten the shit into the stick from their own community nonstop, if anything more than from outside and this song kind of just i feel like it was needed i feel like it was necessary because there is a conversation that needs to be had we all have our own experience we all have our own unique path and as humans we're put here to to unify so all we have to do in order to unify is to respect each other's perspective and understand that there's no right way there's only your way it's a solid piece of conversational art it's a solid start to a discussion Y'all, most of the world listens to Kendrick Lamar. Everybody was talking about his album. Now I want to see y'all talk about the issues that he's talking about and bring it up. Because I know that man don't speak and make albums unless there is, there is, you know, something to think about after you listen. All right. I'm Gifted Young One. Thank y'all for listening. I hope you enjoy. I hope you have a nice day. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.